Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to uh, today's uh, session and uh, what I am going to discuss is another application area and uh, likewise that uh, you have already read about uh, in the previous lecture on uh, retinal uh, image analysis and vessel segmentation within retina. So, I am going to extend on to this one because vessels are also found in other uh, organs of the body and one of those particular organ which we are going to take is uh, lungs and uh, I am going to discuss about vessel segmentation in uh, lung. And for a specific purpose we are going to stick down only to computer tomography scans in the lungs for this purpose and uh, not any other of them. Now, uh, one major reason why uh, CT is being taken over here is that uh, lung is one of those predominant organs which is radiologically imaged. So, which means that you use some sort of an x-ray for imaging. Although MR is also one of the possibilities, but since it is quite fill full of air over there in majority. So, uh, as such MR would not be giving you that kind of a contrast difference between the soft tissues and blood period levels which is expected over there. Whereas, if you look at uh, uh, CT over there you would get down a pretty much uh, contrastive difference between the flowing blood to the uh, alveolar uh, air pockets over there. So, uh, what we would be having is uh, it organized as uh, where I would be introducing to uh, you to one of the challenge uh, which was there in uh, Mikai some time back and uh, this whole challenge was about vessel segmentation in lungs and the rationale is so that uh, you get to know more about the papers and a standard data set which is used in this particular field of uh, lung vessel segmentation. So, from there I would enter into what is a clinical rationale and uh, use of having done a lung vessel segmentation. Uh, with that I would enter into something called as a vesselness measure invented by Alejandro Frangi and uh, this is one of those seminal papers uh, which gives you a clear idea about uh, in the early days how people had actually worked on to uh, segment out vessels in 3D and this this is paper dates back way to back to the 19 uh, early 1990s and uh, at that point of time there was not any machine learning based techniques as we know today for uh, segmentation in 3D objects. But we did figure out a way of uh, using Haitian based operators and then finding out principal component uh, analysis and the principal component vectors over there in order to figure out how we can find out a vesselness response. So, that was one uh, major thing. Uh, as, as a prior art contribution and one of the strongest standing art points uh, from the perspective of vessel segmentation. From there I would enter into describing this particular data set uh, on the challenge which we are speaking about and the different appearances of vessels as you would see either on slices or on total volumes and, and even uh, trying to uh, make you aware about what all different kind of ambiguities may arise if uh, they ever accidentally arise. So, from there uh, we have a tabular uh, comparison of uh, state of the art solutions from the paper which was published on this uh, particular challenge and with that I would come down to an end note with a reference to the paper about which I am discussing. Now, uh, let us enter into what this challenge is all about. So, it is called as the vessel 2012 challenge and uh, you can find it out in grand challenges. So, this is the uh, URL where you can point it down and if you look carefully over there it is called as a vessel segmentation in lung uh, 2012 and this was uh, held uh, at ISB 2012 for the purpose. Now, the rationale which goes down is somewhat like this. Uh, so, on, on my left over here if you see you have a uh, lot of these colorful uh, network structure kind of thing going down and uh, these blue ones are the ones which are colored down and they are the main veins from which uh, your blood flows out and uh, this red one are the main arteries through which your blood flows into the lungs and this orange color is the areolar uh, pathway. So, this, this is where the air tract goes in and then it moves into the alveolus within your lungs where so they are small balloon like structures around which you have blood capillaries going down such that there is gaseous diffusion taking place and that is how your blood get gets oxygenated within the lungs. Now, uh, what we want to do is somewhat segment out these kind of structures over there. So, they can be vascular structure as in blood vessels, they can also be airway structures which are also tubular in its appearance model. Now, 
the reason why we need to do all of them is uh, one of, of one of these conditions which is called as uh, pulmonary uh, embolism and what happens in this case is that uh, if you uh, look carefully then uh, say I have a bottle of water over here with me and then I shake it quite much. So, you would see that there would be some sort of a uh, bubble formation over there this gas gets mixed over there. Now, this happens when this this whole thing over here is a uh, perfectly sort of Newtonian fluid which means it is not compressible as such. Now, if you have uh, if you consider blood then that is not something which is Newtonian and you, you can compress blood it is it does not have a viscous flow over there and, and uh, so there are other properties over there. Now, if you have this gaseous diffusion exchange going down over there and the, it, it goes down into a uh, turbulence which have generally happens within when it is flowing within the ventricles and the auricles of your uh, heart then you would be having uh, small gaseous bubbles being formed and then the same way as I had done with this water bottle over here. Now, so those gaseous bubbles uh, often they might get lodged over here uh, into this blockage of this. Uh, so, whenever there are small atrials or capillaries which are branching out from arteries or there are venules over there. So, this this gas bubble might get lodged over there and then it will restrict flow of any blood through these uh, thin capillaries. Now, you need to be able to detect whether there has been this kind of a blockage and once this kind of a thing happens what happens is that you have another uh, secondary phenomena which is called as aneurysm development and that means that there would be new arteries which just keep on branching from this blocked out part so that it can uh, find out a different way in which the blood can flow and that would form down sort of a small ball a furry ball like structure of lot of arteries uh, wriggling here and there and um, it, it falls a it, it forms a total mass which is uh, not supposed to be present in a uh, perfectly healthy situation of the human being over there. Now, for this particular reason uh, we need to be able to find out along these arteries where all suddenly there are these aneurysm formations and everything and that would mean that I from looking into the CT image there has to be some way of finding looking through across each and every vessel along the length. So, if there are vascular trees so say this is a major vessel coming up and then you have it divided into two different trees and then I will have to track it along the length in order to find out where all it suddenly stopped and you had say a possibility of having an aneurysm. So, that would and if you look carefully at this particular structure you see that there are many many arteries there are, there are so many vessels which can pre be present over here. So, in order to find that there has to be some way to isolate and associate them on the 3D space. Now, this is the challenge which we are trying to solve by medical image analysis. So, there are millions of such capillaries, veins, arteries and, and all sorts of vessels which are present over there and you would like to track and segment out practically each of them which is not so easy to be done manually as such. Now, for that is when uh, this particular paper by Franji was uh, on the Mikai uh, proceedings in 1998 and this is what it solved. So, uh, let us let us go down to the basic equations I will give you a small uh, walk through about what that means. The first equation over here is basically a representation of what the image would look like. So, L is typically called as uh, the image intensity over there or and this intensity is at a location x naught. So, this x is bold so it is a vector location. So, it can be if you are considering a 2D space then this is a x comma y coordinate space. If you are considering a 3D space then it is x comma y comma z. So, you have a tuple representation coming down and delta x is just a small shift variation over there and s is what is called as the scale. Now, from where this scale comes down is say you have a whole uh, volume taken down say I am, I am taking a complete volume which is about 30 centimeters cross 30 centimeters cross 30 centimeters. Now, on the digital space when I am digitizing say I am digitizing this into 512 cross 512 cross 512 this is one way in which my resolution would boil down to 30 centimeters divided by 512 this is my resolution along each uh, dimension of space. Now, I can also represent it in lower number of voxels say 256 cross 256 cross 256. In that case my resolution or, or the minimum resolvability that length is going to increase. So, earlier I had 30 centimeters divided by 512 now I have 30 centimeters divided by 256. So, the smallest size of the object which I could see in the earlier case is much small is, is almost half smaller 
then the object which I can see in the later case which had just 256 samples over there. Now this appearance model of all of these objects will always be changing with the number of samples I keep on pulling and that is a factor which is called as S for us. Okay. Now uh, if you have this kind of a way then you follow down a Taylor series expansion. So since there is a x plus delta x, so you can always do a uh, expansion on the Taylor series and that would have some sort of um, factors over there. One of them is this uh, gradient factor and the other factor this h is what is called as the Hessian factor over there. Now this Hessian is something which you can associate uh, very closely with the Laplacian. So a Laplacian matrix is basically in, in a Laplacian what you have say for a 3D case you will have a uh, uh, del 2 del x2 plus del 2 del y2 plus del 2 del z2. Okay. This is what you would have for a Laplacian in a 3D case. In case of a Hessian what you would have is since you have uh, two different uh, three different vertices along which you are going to compute. So I will have all of the other factors coming down which is del del y of del del x. I will also have del del x of del del y then a del del x of del del z then a del del z of del del y and a del del z of del del x as well. Along with that I have a del del z of del del z which would mean make it down as del 2 del z2 right. So if I am taking all of them together that is a matrix which is called as a Hessian matrix. On a 2D case this matrix would just be a 2, 2D operator matrix in a 3D case this becomes a uh, uh, some, some sort of a so in a 2D case you just have a 2 cross 2 operator matrix in case of a 3D case you will have a 3 by 3 operator matrix coming down over here. Now from that. Uh, Let us look into the first derivative of uh, the image itself at a particular location. So what I can express this one at a given scale is that I take this to the power of gamma and then the derivative of this one will basically be the scale factor to the power of gamma and ga gamma is a particular constant factor on which we are going to work out times uh, multiplied by the actual uh, scale uh, by the image at the native scale which is scale s equal to 0 and then you take that convolved with a Gaussian with a derivative of a Gaussian kernel. This is what this first factor over here looks like such that uh, this g is a Gaussian kernel which you have over here. Now solving all of these together what you would end up getting is that this Hessian which you see over here this has this sort of an expansion form. Okay. So in essence what would come out is a factor which we are looking something like this say that there is a cylindrical structure. So your blood vessels which on the 3D space they are obviously in a small uh, piece of volume if you see you would see a piece of cylinder. Okay. Now if I am travelling along the length of the vessel then I would just be seeing these cylinders going down along the length of the vessel those small small cylinders. Now I take one small volume over there in which I will be getting a piecewise cylinder. Now on this piecewise cylinder if I am going to take a derivative along the length of the cylinder then I will get this sort of a pattern my for my second order derivative which is very sim similar to your uh, uh, actual uh, pattern of a Laplacian of Gaussian. Okay. So this is a concept which we use from here and then we extend onto that concept. So what we do is now we run down an eigenvalue decomposition or a say a principal component analysis on the Hessian response of this uh, Hessian response on the image such that we say that this Hessian response on the image is equal to some sort of a lambda times uh, where these lambdas are the principal component uh, magnitudes times these principal component vectors over there. So that you can get done by just doing a principal component analysis. Now we are not interested much of in the vectors. So these vectors would basically be aligned along these directions. So you would have one say over here, another over here and another somewhere in between. This is for a perfect cylinder but if you have a curved cylinder then you will have some different sort of and say if you have so what would happen is that these axes would no more be aligned along the x, y or z axis but they will be aligned along the length and then your cylinder is going to change along the length and accordingly your uh, these uh, unity vectors will also be changing. But what we are more of interested is in the magnitude of this uh, Eigen vector which is my lambda factor. Now from that what uh, these uh, authors had derived out was they found out two different coefficients called as Ra and Rb. Okay. Now Ra is basically called as the uh, ratio between the largest cross sectional area to the largest semi uh, 
to the largest axis semi length. So, largest cross sectional area means that if I have a cylinder over there and I chop it off, so what will be the total cross sectional area and my largest axis, axis semi length means uh, if I assume that this cylinder is a finite cylinder, then I will have my largest axis which is along the axis over there. So, what is the half of that length? So, that comes down as just the ratio between this uh, amplitudes of these two vectors, uh, the second Eigen vector and the third Eigen vector. Uh, the value of the Eigen vector sorry. So, it is it becomes as the ratio between the second Eigen value and the third. The next one is what gives a ratio between the volume of that total cylinder to the largest cross sectional area and that is given down by the ratio between the first Eigen vector to the root over the second and the product of second and third Eigen vectors over there. Now, you can go for much more details into uh, this paper and find out the theoretical deductions behind them. Now, where we end up using that is somewhere over here which we called as the vesselness measure. So, this vesselness measure is a function which is defined as using those factors called as R a and R b and uh, this other factor called as s which we had computed here which is basically the absolute summation over uh, all the Eigen vectors uh, all, the, all the Eigen values which you find it out. Now, using all of this what we end up getting is a vessel enhancing filter. So, if you carefully look over here this is a uh, coronary angiogram or an x-ray taken down when there was a contrast dye injected into your uh, blood stream. So, because of this uh, uh, radio opaque contrast dye in your blood stream, so you get them as dark and everything else is bright. But the problem is if you look into this sort of an image here it there is a lot of intensity inhomogeneity this side it is quite bright in the background over here it is quite dark. So, over here the vessels are pretty easily discriminable, but here as you go it is really hard for you to find out what this where these vessels are, but using this kind of a filter you would be able to very easily get down a vessel map against a black background and this is just opposite of this particular vessel map which I am seeing over there. Now, using these two factors you can obviously correct for the intensity inhomogeneity over here and then you can find out this sort of an image. So, what it would do is essentially it would uh, subtract out everything on the background other than the vessels keep kept in their raw intensity. And now, what I get is a uh, angiogram image or a map of all the vessels in its original form without the inhomogeneity in the background intensity at all. Now, this is what uh, a very simple technique which was not using any sort of complicated uh, algorithms on say convex optimizations or uh, neural networks or uh, random forests or uh, Bayesian uh, belief networks or, or any of them to do it and it was just a pure voxel to voxel calculation finding out a hessian of the whole volume for each point from the hessian you find from the hessian matrix you find out the three Eigen values and Eigen vectors you use just those Eigen values in order to compute three factors R a, R b and s and given down you have three constant coefficients which you tune as per your application as alpha, beta and c, you can always create out this wonderful vessel segmentation coming down and it is a you do not need any learning samples, you, you do not have uh, uh, bias variations across different imaging instruments except for this tunability of alphas and betas and c's which you will have to do appropriately. Now, with these this, this has been a state of art for long. So, since 1998 till 2012 when uh, this challenge got announced this was the state of art, but once the challenge got announced what they did was quite interesting. So, uh, since we have this problem of uh, changing across vendors and changing across hospitals, so imaging instruments as they keep on changing their resolution changes their operating behavior changes and uh, as a result all of your image analysis problems which got trained on one domain in order to make it work on another domain becomes a major challenge and for medical image analysis software development this is uh, one one major issue which you will have to take care of. So, these people had actually released out a data set which was multi centric and on multiple devices as well as this was on multiple or uh, like imaging protocols and organic nature. So, there were images from angiographic CT, there were images from a chest CT. So, angiographic CT is where you put down a contrast agent within the blood vessels and then you take a CT over there which is also called as a CT angiogram. And in a normal chest CT you do not put down a contrast agent, you just raw take down raw images on the CT from there. Then, uh, so out of all of this you also have a HR uh, uh, CT of the chest taken down and uh, LD CT of the chest. 
Now, each of them were taken down for a different kind of a pathological scenario. So, they were not from healthy people at all. So, they were from different different pathologies and that included uh, alveolar inflammation to uh, uh, pulmonary uh, thrombolism and all of these multiple ones. And if you look on this column, you see that they are from different scanners. So, the make and model of each of these different scanners is set. On top of that, the spacing in millimeter and the z sampling. So, spacing in millimeter is basically when you have a CT scanner over there. So, your transducer elements are spaced at a specific distance your your receivers x ray receivers over there. Now, that is the slice spacing between the elements sensing elements and then we have the z spacing between. So, this is the difference between the slices coming down and this this is what the z spacing is. Now, this z spacing is also quite different. So, there are sometimes the z spacing is 1 millimeter sometimes it is 0 0.7 millimeters and then you also have different number of slices coming down as well as the total uh, excitation energy of the CT tube and the current being consumed is also different. So, obviously, the energy of the x rays which were emitted from the x ray tube within the CT when taking the CT was also different. So, you have all possible kinds of variations which can happen uh, in this kind of an imaging environment captured in a diversity in this particular data set. So, if you get into the vessels over here, so on the vessel appearance model you would see that all of these yellow spots over there they are basically all the points which have a vessel, but then if you look into one of the slices you will never be able to find down all the vessels because some vessels may be orthogonal to the plane of my imaging over here. The ones only which are aligned along the plane of imaging say these ones are the ones which are visible on this particular plane. So, that is a major challenge and then the moment say I do some sort of a blurring I lose all of them out. So, people use something called as the 3D volume appearance model. So, the images are not quite uh, high resolution and uh, visible over here you can definitely go down to the paper from where I have taken down which is linked at the end and that is the summary paper for the contest. And then you can also run down your 3D visualizations in order to see down the whole vessel map uh, in a much better way. So, we had done a uh, very uh, early demonstration with Mavis lab where I was showing you how to open up DICOM files and do it. So, over here also you can use DICOM files and then run down your own slicer uh, uh, arguments within the DICOM viewer over there. So, that you can see a group of uh, image slices coming down and you have a 3D visualization. Now, uh, the whole rationale over there was that there is a lot of uh, diversity in the appearance of these vessels. So, if you look over here, you would see these thin vessels appearing and most of them are some sort of obliquely aligned to the plane of uh, imaging. So, this axial plane along which I have taken down these images. So, this is my whole body and I cut down this way. So, that becomes my axial plane on which it is done and that is the uh, primary conformal plane of imaging for a CT because your, your gantry is rotating like this and the person is moving like this. So, you would just be getting down axial scans over there. Now, in some high resolution versions you have these small ones very easily visible, but then this one over here some of them are very low resolution and often these bundle of uh, vessels which you see over here that would get mistaken for some sort of a mucinous deposit or uh, other kind of an appearance abnormality or sometimes they, they are like over here it is possibly not a vessel, but then uh, it has something an appearance which is similar to that. So, these are all the challenges which you have when looking down on a 2D space instead of a whole 3D space from the vessel segmentation problem. So, there were a lot of teams who had submitted. So, some of them had uh, submitted before the challenge and some of them had submitted after the challenge had closed and they had taken all of them. So, there uh, so we just have alphabetic numberings over there and the details of the teams are I am not disclosing discussing much about them over there. But uh, what I wanted to predominantly say is that if you look into their approaches. So, you can broadly classify them into probabilistic approaches which uh, one of them uses thresholding and most of them use the Hessian based approach. So, either they go down by Frangi's uh, native method of taking the Eigen values corresponding to the Eigen vectors of a Hessian decomposition or they use a Hessian decomposition and then on top of that use some other operators or learning engines in order to build on top of it. So, then there were approaches which were say binary and what this binary. So, the all of them were giving a soft valued classification. So, a probability of a voxel being associated with a vessel or not. There were other methods which did a hard classification either that voxel is a vessel or not. So, over there uh, there were some approaches which were using Hessian with a region growing approach. There were obviously machine learning based uh, techniques which use support vector machines then there were region growing and, and a pure Hessian based techniques. 
the references uh, R1 and R2 are basically uh, R1 is a thresholding based approach which is just based on the Hounsfield unit you draw a hard threshold. If your Hounsfield unit is between this value and this value, then that becomes a vessel otherwise not. So, that is the thresholding approach. In the other one, it is a Hessian based approach which is a direct implementation of Frangi's method which we had discussed earlier. Then there were a few other ones which were submitted beyond the challenge. So, they did not go on to win any prize or anything, but they were also included as part of this paper publication and there also the majority of them had a Hessian based and a region growing based approach. So, this is a total summary contribution. You can read much more details about each of them because already we have done those linear algebra concepts and uh, texture measures and learning systems in the earlier weeks about how to uh, analyze images. So, this is a consolidated summary of different approaches which people can use and there is no uh, such thing as one model fits all or there is one superior model over there. So, everything has its own pros and cons. And coming to that, uh, I have a visual comparison of these uh, different kind of methods which we are performing. So, the each of these columns is from a different method. The first column is obviously the ground truth which was marked down by the human observer. If you see on the uh, all of these red markings which you see over here are the pixels which are marked down by a human expert saying that this is actually a vessel. So, they look into the 3D space and the markings was in the 3D space. We just take down one of these 2D slices and then visualize the markings over here. The second, third, fourth and fifth rows over um, the third, fourth, fifth and sixth columns over here, these are the ones which correspond to output of different algorithms. Now, if you look over there, obviously some of them are not that good. Some of them are pretty efficient and close to what a ground truth is, but then there are some of them which are far away from that including like this does not detect over here and over here it is a curious case because it detects everything around this particular vessel as a vessel, but it does not say that this vessel is actually a vessel location. So, from this you have a very clear idea that it is obviously not a uh, single shot go through problem, but then uh, obviously starting with one of these uh, techniques you can find out a much better way of doing it. So, from there uh, although segmentation results and everything are there in the paper and I am not revising it once again. The accuracies from this challenge are pretty impressive because you get down highest accuracy which is quite uh, close to uh, uh, more than 90 percent uh, as reported over here and some of them like most of them have a gross average performance which is similar although they use a different method which emphasizes on a different aspect. So, obviously, you can look into uh, the specific aspects of the paper where they see uh, as to the performance for thin arteries versus uh, for thin vessel versus medium size vessel versus large size vessel and which method is strong for which of them. So, just have a careful look through it. So, with this uh, as we come to the end, uh, this is the main paper on which I am referring to. So, just uh, go through this one which is the consolidated study for vessel 2012 and this was a Medaille publication from 2014. Now, with that uh, I come down to yet another uh, uh, interesting uh, conclusive note about uh, the problems which we solve on medical image analysis and one, and, and one case scenario with uh, computer tomography image analysis. So, uh, be tuned up for the upcoming ones on uh, MR as well. So, with that uh, thank you.